So hi, Micro Hunter here, and today I want to talk about the challenges of observing insects and other relatively large arthropods under a compound microscope like I have over here. Normally, when you want to uh, look at uh, insects, uh, um, spiders and other arthropods, they're usually a little bit too large and therefore normally you would use stereo microscopes. Uh, but today I received a question from one of my viewers again, which I would like uh, to share with you. So here we go. Are there any challenges to looking at bugs with microscopes that are exclusively lit from below? Are you restricted to looking only at the thinner or more transparent parts of the insects? I do want to look at both bugs and microbes and I would like, um, would, would I be able to do that with a microscope uh, like this particular brand or would I need something else? So well first of all thank you for uh, the question and uh, before I start out uh, yeah the problem with insects is is that it does not fulfill any they often do not fulfill any of the three criteria that uh, the specimen must fulfill so that you can look at uh, it using a compound microscope. And what are the three criteria? First of all, the specimen has to be sufficiently small. After all, you have to be able to fit it on a microscope slide. It has to be sufficiently thin um, uh, because the depth of field of compound microscopes is quite low and you're not able to put a cover glass on top of it otherwise. And the third thing is it has to be sufficiently transparent because if it's too pigmented, too dark, it's gonna absorb too much light and you're just gonna see a black shadow and yeah. And if a specimen is not, uh, does not fulfill these uh, three criteria, then you have to process the specimen in such a way that you're getting it into that form. And uh, often this is uh, indeed the case uh, with insects. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you now a couple of uh, possibilities uh, how you can make them anyway somehow observable using a compound microscope. The first uh, thing is, or the first suggestion is, is that you don't process it at all, but you, you look at the insect using the po low power four times um, objective. So that's usually the, small, that's the smallest one. Um, and uh, what you do is, is uh, you rotate this um, into position, you put your insect on a microscope slide and what you do is, is you use a desk lamp or a flashlight to illuminate the insect from the top. Usually there is, um, yeah, the distance between the objective and the insect is a couple of, I don't know, maybe a centimeter or two centimeters, you know, a small distance. And this is generally uh, large enough uh, for light uh, to be able to still illuminate the specimen. I would highly try this out. Um, this, it, the results are quite uh, surprisingly good. Um, you will get a t total magnification of four times times 10 times is 40 times. And this magnification is already quite high. Okay. Um, the problem, of course, is, is the relatively low depth of field, but yeah, that's simply something that we have to live with, but actually it, it works reasonably well. So this is the first thing that I would uh, recommend that you try out. Yeah, don't process the specimen, put it directly on the microscope slide and uh, use, look at it using the low power objective. If you want to use a slightly higher power, like the 10 times objective, be aware that the objective uh, to, uh, sub, uh, to specimen distance, the so-called the working distance is already much lower and it might be a little bit more difficult to actually shine a light on the specimen because the objective actually will cast a shadow. So what you have to do is, is you have to actually get quite close with the flashlight or the desk lamp and you have to make sure it's kind of, um, yeah, um, the angle is not too high so that it's able to illuminate the specimen from the side. It works as well. I've also tried it with a 10 times objective, but um, honestly, due to the low depth of field, hmm, didn't look quite as good, but with a four times objective, it works uh, quite reasonably well. Next uh, recommendation, there are so many insects around, you just might want to try insects or small mites, uh, which are related to the spiders, uh, which are sufficiently small, transparent and not pigmented. And simply choose uh, organisms that do fit uh, the criteria. And this actually also works uh, quite, quite well. So if you limit your um, investigation to the smaller insects and smaller um, arthropods, then actually this is also going to work. Um, so um, if you have no specific research interests, but if you're just interested in general observation of, uh, of, of arthropods, then yeah, go ahead and uh, observe the smaller ones. Okay, so that's uh, the simple um, solution. You can make whole mounts uh, using them as well. It works. Okay, I've done so before myself. Next recommendation is, is uh, that you hmm, dissect uh, the insect. Um, so certain insect parts are actually small enough, transparent enough and thin enough. For example, the wings of the insect are very popular to look at. They're quite transparent. 
There are many little hair growing on the insect wing, um, which can be observed. Um, this is also actually, I sometimes use this also to test a little bit the objective, how good the objective quality is. Um, you can uh, also, of course, uh, look at insect legs. Um, as a matter of fact, very often um, those insect parts um, come already with a microscope. So fly legs, for example, a very common uh, specimen that you find in many microscope on many micro educational microscope slides. So yeah, dissect the insect, take it apart. Um, maybe you want to place it into alcohol for, for some time. So not only to withdraw the water, but also to disinfect uh, the specimen a little bit. Um, and then, uh, yeah, put it on a microscope slide and look what you're able to see. So the next uh, technique is a little bit, uh, yeah, it's also something that I've used, but it's a little bit more, um, you, you, yeah, digital in, in that sense. What you can do is the following, and is, is that you make yourself a dark field patch stop and that you look at the insect using dark field. Um, what dark field will do is it will uh, make the black background black and the light that uh, strikes the insect from the side is then refracted back into the objective. And this basically means that you're going to see the insect on a black background. The problem is, is that many insects are so pigmented that you're still not able to see a lot. However, uh, what you're able to do is, is you're able to uh, go up with the camera sensitivity, the ISO sensitivity if you use a DSLR or the camera gain if you use a microscope camera, and uh, then, or you extend the exposure time, and then the camera is able to see this, the little amount of light that's able to go through the insect, it's able to see that as well. And uh, by using dark field, you make sure that uh, you are removing, reducing the glare, because when you have a long time exposure, there is the danger that uh, there is too much light, uh, direct microscope light going into the sensor of the camera. But if you use dark field, then you remove the excess light and you're just capturing the light that actually will go through the insect. And uh, that means that you're able to actually um, to see things that are you probably not normally able to see. So this is actually also something that you might want to try out, but this also only works if the insect is not too thick. It's, so don't try to put a big bug under the microscope. It's still not going to work, uh, but uh, it's still, it expands the, at least the possibilities um, um, of insects and other arthropods that you're able to observe this way. So the next one, uh, next suggestion is, is do try different mounting media. You have to understand that sometimes uh, specimens look darker than they should look, uh, not because they're only pigmented, but because they contain air. And uh, if there is, if they're now uh, in water and uh, there is a different, uh, big difference in the refractive index between the air, which is maybe inside the insect and on the surface of the insect and the insect here, yeah, and also the water. And if there is a big refractive index, what this means is that the light, light bounces away and you see um, at the place where the air meets the water, you see dark area. So this means that if the mounting medium does not really connect well to the specimen, um, then, or if the refractive index is too different, you're also going to see it darker than you probably could see it, should see it. So my suggestion is, is try different mounting media, um, not only water, but you can try also vegetable oil, cooking oil, um, and uh, you can also try, and this is something that insects uh, and entomologists, insect specialists, uh, they like to use Eupural as a mounting medium. Eupural is a very, very common mounting medium um, to mount insects. And uh, this uh, mounting medium actually works quite well also because it really connects well to the insect. It will um, go into the insect and this will also add to its clearing action and it make, will make certain parts of the insect more transparent simply because the refractive index itself uh, is more, yeah, matches. And the mounting medium itself over time will also um, remove the pigments a little bit and clear up the specimen. So it has actually several multiple positive effects. But yeah, do try different mounting media and uh, see um, how well it works. Yeah, and then of course uh, the most uh, recommended uh, suggestion at the very end, and that is, is that you use chemical clearing uh, to remove the pigment. And there is a very common way or documented way that entomologists use, and that is if you place the insect, which is too dark, then you place it for several days in a 5 to 10% solution of potassium hydroxide. I also read that sodium hydroxide also works. It's a strong base. Be careful with this stuff, okay? Um, yeah, it's very caustic, but uh, potassium hydroxide, KOH, will um, remove and it will, will the pigment, 
and it will add to a clearing um, you know, action. And this means that after you've placed it in the KOH for a couple of days, um, you are going to then have you have to then take the insect out. You have to water it for a couple of days to remove the KOH. Um, and then you want to remove the water by placing it into alcohol for a couple of days. Um, and then you can mount it. You know, if you don't want to make a permanent mount, you can of course directly observe it after the washing stage in water, you can directly observe it. Um, this has the advantage that uh, it makes the chitin, the exoskeleton, which is the pigmented dark um, outside of the insect, it clears it and therefore you're able to see into the insect. So this is especially interesting for those folks who want to study the organs of the insect um, without having to dissect it. And so this way you can actually look through uh, the exoskeleton. Um, what's something I, ha I have not tried, but apparently also works, is, is that you use uh, bleaching agents uh, like uh, hydrogen um, peroxide, H2O2. This can, as a matter of fact, also be found nowadays in many uh, disinfectants, hand disinfectants. And it's highly oxidizing. Um, and this uh, will actually also bleach. Um, I know that hydrogen peroxide is also used to bleach hair, for example. So that might something be also something that you might want to try out. Uh, put the insect into H2O2, uh, around a 3% solution. Be really careful with this stuff. It's pretty aggressive. Um, and then um, see if this is able to also remove um, uh, some of the, of the pigments. And last but not least, something that I've uh, discovered by accident. In my uh, bedroom, there is a lamp. And of course, there are a whole bunch of insects that uh, collect there. And uh, when I removed the lamp, I saw that many of these in insects, pretty much all of them, were white. The high intensity of the light uh, actually also bleached them. Now, those insects were very fragile. As soon as you tried to touch them with a tweezer, um, it started to fall apart. But they were very white uh, because the light uh, removed the pigment as well. So this is actually also something that you might want to try out. Uh, yeah, light bleaching. Uh, yeah, never tried it out otherwise besides this accidental discovery. But I think there are plenty of things that you can now try to experiment around by uh, processing the insects and using different, uh, the low power objective, many things that you can um, experiment around. You do not always uh, need uh, compound uh, stereo microscopes uh, to observe insects, but sometimes compound microscopes also work. But honestly, um, if you're really interested in entomology and studying insects and uh, mites and ticks and arthropods, then do buy yourself a, a, st um, a stereo microscope. It's really worth it. All the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.